So hello everyone. Today we will see numerical integration by using Gauss quadrature method. So first we will see what type of integration is required in finite element method. So in generally in finite element method you will come across f of x into dx or you will come across a to b and then again c to d f of xy into dx dy or else you will come across a to b then again c to d and then again e to f f of x y z dx dy and dz what does it mean i have written three different format this is format number one second and third what does it mean see here we have single integration means line integral okay this is line integral this is integration over an area and this is integration over a volume means we can say this is one dimensional this is for 2d and this is for 3d okay so we will discuss here how to solve this type of integration by using gauss quadrature method one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional problems one dimensional means we will have a single limit and coming to two dimensional, we will have double limits, two uh, limits, A to B and C to D. Even you can see we have two function is of here. You can say this depends upon this function is based on x as well as y also. Here the function is of only x. And here the function is of x, y, and z. So this type of problem we will come across while. Uh, dealing with this numerical integration in finite element method. So we will go for this Gauss quadrature method. Now coming to Gauss quadrature method, what does this method is? How we will approach this type of problem? So according to Gauss quadrature method, we will have one table. In that, we will have Gauss points, in that table, we will have Gauss points, value of x, and weight function. So we will see that what is that table. I will give that table later on. So first, we will see if we have, according to Gauss quadrature method, if we have an integration, let us say, an integration, I am representing as integration over a to b function fx dx. So how to solve this integration by using Gauss quadrature? Yeah, normal integration method, you people know how to solve normal integration simple by following that rules, we can solve. But how to approach when the problem is they're asking you to solve using Gauss quadrature method. So if you will see, if you will expand this, this can be written as summation according to Gauss quadrature method. This formula can be given as formula for integration of a to b f of x dx means for one dimensional problem summation i is equal to 1 to n w i f of x i now here what is this w i and x i x i is called as sampling points or boss points what is x i x i is called as sampling points or called as Gauss points. Gauss points. So f of x i are the values of function at Gauss point i is equal to 1 to n, right? This f of x i is nothing just whatever the values of Gauss point will be there. So function of that we will get there. Wi are called as weight function. This Wi is nothing weight function. Wi is nothing weight function, right? So they have defined two terms, sampling point or called as Gauss point also. 
So basically, you will come across this term more as compared to sampling points. They will give you Gauss points rather than uh, giving that sampling points. So Gauss points, Xi means nothing, Gauss points, Wi is weight function. So what is this? So they have given two different functions for locations. So they have given a table, right? So let us see the table. In that table, they have defined this Gauss point and they have defined the weight function. So that table you need to remember. So in that table, there is three things they have given. They have given number of Gauss points, number of Gauss points, Then we have given, they have given location of xi, location of xi, that is i is equal to from 1 to n. And then they have given weight function, that is wi. And that's also from i is equal to 1 to So if number of Gauss point is one, then they have given, because that is one means I is equal to one. So X1 is equal to, they have given here, the X1 value is 0, 0.0 means zero value. And W1 value will be directly 2.0. For Gauss point, number of Gauss point two. If we have two number of Gauss point number two, then we will have X1, X2, right? Because if we have one, then here we will put i is equal to one. So x1 is equal to zero and w1 is equal to 2.0. If we have number of Gauss point two, means Gauss point number is two, then we will have x1, x2. So they have given x1, x2 value, x1 comma x2, x1. Let me write it again. X1. Comma x2 will be equal to plus minus one upon root three. So x1 will be one by root three, and x2 will be minus one by root three. That's it. This is the value of x1 and x2. I'm not giving this value in decimals because uh, remembering that decimal points will be difficult for you. So just remember one thing: just use your calci and find this value and you have to write the values after decimal up to six points, means zero point something, something will come, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, up to six points you have to write. Suppose if you will find this value of one by root three, so you will get the value as 0 0.77, sorry, 0 0.57, 7350. So you have to take up to this, right? So whatever the values I have given, I am giving in this fraction, you have to take up to six decimal points, right? So remember these things, up to six decimal points, you have to take the values. I'm not giving, if I will give here x1 comma x2 is equal to plus minus 0 0.577350, so it will be difficult for you to remember this values, right? And it is easy to remember one by root three. So that's why I'm giving here one by root three. Now x1, x2 is nothing, 1 by root 3. And here w1, w2 will come, right? So w1 will be equal to w2 will be equal to 1. And for 3, number of Gauss point 3. So number of Gauss point 3, x1, x3. x1, comma x3, value is going to be plus minus root under 3 by 5 and x2 value is 0. x2 value will be 0 and x1, x3 is plus minus root under 3 by 5. Similarly here w1, w3 will be w1 will be equal to w3 will be equal to 5 by 9 and w2 value will be 8 by 9. So this is the table.
this is the table so in this table everything is given only one thing is unknown that is number of gauss point how to calculate number of gauss point if you are able to calculate the number of gauss points then it will be easy for you to find x values and w values once you will find x values and w values your integration is completed right so we will discuss how to find this number of gauss point by using a problem or right so let us take a problem just you have to remember this uh, table only this table because they won't go beyond number of gauss point 3 they will restrict the problem till gauss point 3 even uh, generally i have seen they have restricting up to 2 itself they are not going for 3 also in the rare cases they are going for 3 so 3 till 3 you have to remember these values first value is 0 2 second value is plus minus 1 by 2 3 1 then third value is just don't be confused here x1 and x3 here x2 is 0 so don't write here x1 x2 don't be confused and don't use this uh, don't do this types of mistakes silly mistakes it will be problem it will create a problem for the in that examination for you so please be careful here i am i have written x1 and x3 value not x2 x2 value is directly zero here also w1 w3 value will be same but w2 value is going to be different next now how to find this number of gauss point so number of gauss point for finding number of gauss point uh nothing we need to do just we need to see like uh, if the function is given okay suppose if the function is given we need to equate the degree of the function whatever the degree of the function is there we need to equate with 2n minus 1 and that n is nothing number of gauss points so suppose a equation is given for example for example i have taken a equation let me take an equation and let me show how to calculate this gauss point number of gauss points so i have taken a equation suppose x4 plus 3x cube minus x this we need to integrate so just i have taken the function so how to calculate n here so you need to do nothing here just you need to equate 2n minus 1 remember this 2n minus 1 is equal to what is the degree of this highest degree you can see here degree of this 4 right so you need to equate highest power you need to see right so see here what is that power 4 just equate to 4 here so from here if you will solve 2n will be equal to 5 therefore n will be equal to 5 by 2 that is equal to 2.5 and you know i have not defined any function for 2.5 so you can say sir rather we can uh, shall we go for 2 or shall we go for 3 obviously you know if this value is 2.5 if the value is more than 2 just go for the next one so what is the next one 3 so this is the problem based on number of gauss point number 3 means in this table this is related to this n is equal to 3 problem this number of gauss point is nothing n n is equal to 3 so we will have x1 x2 x3 value and w1 w2 w3 values so that is the way to find n number of gauss points so by seeing this i can conclude here suppose for n is equal to 1 the degree of the uh, function will be for n is equal to 1 2n minus 1 right that is 2 into 1 minus 1 that is equal to 2 minus 1 is 1 for n is equal to 2 2 into 2 minus 1 that will equal to 3 n is equal to suppose 3 2 into 3 6 minus 1 that is equal to 5 so you need to see the function highest power is 1 belongs to n is equal to 1 better you go for this method what will how much time it will take just fraction of second and that will be safe and secure there will be no confusion while solving the problem so i will suggest if they have mentioned in the problem number of cos point not a problem if they have not mentioned the number of gauss point go for this and find out just you need to see the highest power equate it with 2n minus 1 and that's 
See here, power is four, but still we are coming to n is equal to three. But here, what I have said, power will be five, then n will be equal to three. Yeah, that is right. But what will be if the power is more than three and less than five? It comes between this, right? If it comes between this, we need to go for the next one. So see here, power is four, highest power. So we will go for n is equal to three. So better just go for this concept. Use this. In any problem, if you are going to solve, first you need to find number of cross point. This is very, very important. Without this, how will you use that data? So n value is very important. So n value you need to calculate by using this, you can calculate the n value. Now let us see a problem. Yeah, before going to a problem, let me give the formula for two dimensional also. See, coming to the problems in examination, they will restrict the problem to one dimensional, mostly in most of the cases. Very rare I have seen that they have given the problem from two dimensional problem. Like the, the, in the first slide itself, I have explained this is one dimensional, means you will get the most of the problem in this format. In very rare situation, you will get a problem on two dimensional. There will be no, there is no scope of getting three dimensional problem because it will become very lengthy to calculate. Rather, it will be easy to calculate directly than using this method. So, mostly they will restrict the problem up to uh, one dimensional, but in some cases, they may go for two dimensional also with uh, less calculative function, right? They may go for two dimensional. So, let us see the formula for two dimensional because we have seen the formula for one dimensional. This is for one. I have given the formula for one dimensional, right? If any function is there, limit a to b, f of x dx is equal to summation, i is equal to one to n, wi, f of x i. So similarly, we will go for two dimensional function for 2D, for two dimensional problem. What will be the formula? Let us see. So for two dimensional, the formula is going to be, Integration i is equal to a to b c to d f of x comma y dx dy. Then we can write it as summation j is equal to one to n summation i is equal to 1 to n wj wi f of x i y j. So I will discuss this. Uh, we will solve the problem based on this. Then we will come to know how to solve this type of problem. Not an issue. Just here you note down the formula. And the most important thing, the most important thing I need to tell you that limit we have taken from A to B, right? Limit we have taken from A to B in 1D. And in 2D, we have taken limit from A to B and then C to D. So these things, whatever the limit we have taken, the limit should be from minus one to one. The limit should be from minus one to one only. That is restricted. If the limit is different also, we need to convert that limit into minus one to one. Without converting that limit into minus one to one, we cannot select this method to solve the integration. Now, as soon as I am telling the limit is from minus one to one, you must think of natural coordinate system. Natural coordinate system, right? Because in that natural coordinate system, the data value is going to be from minus one to one. And similarly, for 1D, for 2D, zeta and eta I have taken. And zeta and eta value is going to be from minus one to one again. Means the limit is to be from minus one to one. What does it mean? It means this method is used or it is based on natural coordinate system only. 
it will work on natural coordinate system that's why the limit is restricted from minus 1 to 1 so more in most of the cases they will give the limit from minus 1 to 1 itself in the problem but if they have not mentioned minus 1 to 1 in place of minus 1 to 1 they have given some other value then we need to change the limit we will change the limit and then we will make that limit into minus 1 to 1 and then we will solve the problem so that problem also we will see so now let us take a problem now Let us take a problem. Suppose the same problem that function I have taken, right? Let us take i is equal to integration minus 1 to 1 x4 plus 3x cube minus x into dx. We need to integrate this using God's quadrature method. So first, what we will see, first we need to find n value. So how you will find n value 2n minus 1 is equal to highest power 4, n is equal to from here, that will become 5, 5 by 2, 2.5. So that will approach to 3. So that is this problem is n is equal to 3 problem is got gauss point 3. We need to, we have calculated number of gauss point 3. So whatever the value we will take, that value will be from the table, we will see the row of that n is equal to 3. From there, we will take value of x1, x2, x3, w1, w2, w3. So now, the function, see this is the function f of x into dx. So how we will see this? Minus 1 to 1 f of x into dx. So how will you elaborate? How will you expand this? So expansion can be written as c. Summation means what? From i is equal to 1 to n. Here n is 3. So from 1 to 3. So we can write it as w1 f of x1 plus w2 f of x2 plus w3 f of x3. Right? The expansion of this can be written as because the formula we know the formula right minus 1 to 1 f of x dx formula is summation i is equal to 1 to n w i f of x i so here we will put 1 so w1 f of x1 we will put 2 plus w2 f of x2 we will put 3 w3 f of x3 so w1 w2 w3 x1, x2, x3, everything is given in that table. From that, from that table, we need to find this value. So let us find first w1 f of x1. Individually, I am finding so that it will be easy for you to understand how to calculate. w1 f of x1. So how will you calculate this value first? So w1 value we will take from there. First, we need to take w1 value. So what is w1 value? Table, see the table. n is equal to 3, w1. w1 is 5 by 9, right? So we will take w1 is 5 by 9, 5 by 9 into f of x1. f of x1 means what? Function and in that function we need to put the value of x as x1 and x1 value from where you will get x1 value is plus root under 3 by 5. And what is the function? Function function is x4 plus 3x cube minus x. So here we can write in this. How will you write? It will become x1 to the power 4 plus 3x1 cube minus x1. Right? Okay. So now put the value of x1. So 5 by 9. x1 value, we have already seen what is x1 value. x1 value is plus root 3 by 5. So plus root 3 by 5. Root 3 by 5 to the power 4 plus 3 into 
root 3 by 5 whole cube minus root 3 by 5. And just calculate it. After calculation of this, we will get, because you need to take this in decimals and up to how many decimals? Six decimals. Just take the values, every value, this value, this value, everything is decimals and then calculate. After calculating, you will get 0 0.5443. Now, similarly, we will go for W2 f of x2. W2 f of x2. So W2 value, how much? W2, 8 by 9, x2, 0. So 8 by 9, 8 by 9 into here, in place of x1, we will have x2, right? So x2 value is 0, so 0 to the power 4, 0, 0 into 3, 0 minus 0. So this is going to be 0, so total value is going to be 0. Then we will have third one, that is W3 f of x3. So now we have W3 value, let us see W3 value, W3 value is again 5 by 9, x3 is minus root, under 3 by 5. So after putting all the values, I am writing the value directly because you know how to put these values. After putting these values, we will get the value of W3 f of x3 as minus 0 0.1443. So we got all the values. Therefore, therefore we can write integration of i is equal to minus 1 to 1 x4 plus 3x cube minus x into dx is equal to, now already we have expanded this in this format, w1 f of x1 value we have, we have this value, we have this value, all three values we need to add here. So just add up all the values we have 0 0.5443 plus 0 minus 0 0.1443. So we are ending up with the value of 0 0.4. We are ending up with the value of 0 0.4. This is our answer, I value. We have calculated this integration value as 0. Point. This is your answer, final answer. So nothing we need to do is see. Just expand it, find the n value, then expand the equation in that I have given the formula, right? Just expand it and remember one thing, the limit is going to be from minus one to one itself. It is not going to be anything different. If it is anything different, we need to change the limit value from that value to minus one to one because this is working on natural coordinate system. So see in the question itself, they have given minus one to one. Most of the cases they will give, but in some cases they may, might change the limit. And even in the previous year questions also, I have seen that they are changing the limit value. So just one additional step we need to follow. That's it. The procedure is going to be same. Only one additional step we will follow. So we got this. Sometimes in the same question, they will ask you to verify by using normal integration values just verification. So just you, how will you verify? For verification, go for normal integration. For verification, if you will go for normal integration, so here x to the power four integration will be x to the power five by five. So one by five x to the power five plus three x cube. So three into three, uh, we will end up with uh, that we will get three by four x to the power four. 3 by 4, x to the power 4, this is 4. Three by four, x to the power four plus, sorry, minus minus x into dx. So x will be x square by two. And limit is from minus one to one. Just put the upper limit minus lower limit value. So upper limit minus lower limit value, you will get two by five, just normal integration is here. 
final result is 0 0.4. See, the value is same. So this is the verification of this problem by using normal integration method. So normally we can solve. Now you will be having a doubt, sir. Normally integration, doing normal integration is far better and far easier than this method, yeah. But in this type of questions, but when the question will be complicated, that value that will help you, the words quadrature method will help you to solve complicated problem in very easier manner. There, you, there will be problem in doing normal integration, right? So this was a simple problem. So just you did, did solving in only two to three steps, but in all the other integration, it might take 10 or 15 steps. There also you will end up here with two or three steps because in this method, nothing is going to change. Whatever the steps we have followed, same steps will be valid for each and every type of question. So we have done with the problem. Next, we will see a problem on 2D problem, means 2D integration problem on loss quadrature method. Okay. 